TGI Friday for August 26th. All right, testing. August 11th, the CDC changed the guidelines for testing, quarantine, exposure, all of that good stuff. The city is still two weeks later plus not followed suit. Immediately after the CDC changed its guidelines, I had sent a letter to Management Labor Affairs requesting uh, a review of the city's policy and changes accordingly to match the CDC. We still do not have an answer. We had two mediation sessions in that two week stretch where they were then again pressed for what is the latest update for the city policy. Yet again, we still don't know. We're still having discussions about it. it has been their excuse for two weeks now. Wednesday, the lawyers had a meeting with the arbitrator who maintained jurisdiction over the COVID ruling. In that conversation, the city yet again explained to the arbitrator, the city hasn't worked out what the policy going forward is going to be, blah, 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 blah. He gave them one week. So next Wednesday, they have to give a written proposal to the arbitrator about what the city's policy is going to be going forward. Uh, and he will address it if needed from there. The other topic was, which is total nonsense, they've been basically doing nothing about it um, for the two weeks, not talking about crap. But the other consideration was HIPAA violations and members' vaccination status being exposed to supervisors, which has been an issue from day one, whether it's the portal or something else when it comes to the personal days awarded for vaccine officers, whatever. Um, and we kept talking about who would have access to the list of vaccinated officers. And the testing, obviously, obligation then ex in light exposes those who were not vaccinated. That is a HIPAA violation. You are disseminating medical history for an individual officer. It cannot be done. It is a violation of law. So. The arbitrator agreed these concerns have been addressed previously and the city played dumb or minimizing, et cetera, et cetera. Well, Wednesday and even this morning, they talked about eight officers being subjected and exposed. It is an outright lie, yet again. The lists are much more expansive than that. Some units are imposing them and having conversations with the members on them, other ones or not are not. I would hope that they're being thrown in a shredder because that information should never be disseminated. It was supposed to be a very limited number of people in human resources and the police department who had access to that list. That's not been going on. There have been units who have dozens of officers on the list where supervisors are informing them they are not in compliance with the testing requirement, whether it's a week, a month, two months, or ever. Again, the length of time is irrelevant. The point of someone's vaccination status being exposed is the violation. Um, we'll see Wednesday what happens. I will be involved in that call. Uh, it's not just going to be the attorneys this time. So we'll see what the policy is going forward. But understand, to expect this mayor to do the right thing and to back off and admit that she was wrong all along, which is where we're at right now, it's probably not going to happen unless she's forced to do it. She is that vindictive and miserable and little of a human being. But I guess we'll make lemonade out of lemons we get. So stay tuned on that. I'll probably have an update Wednesday afternoon uh, after that conference call. Let's talk about Miss Elena Guthrich, who is the new Deputy Mayor of Public Safety. Not the first one, not the second one, not even the third one. The fourth Deputy Mayor of Public Safety under Mayor Lightfoot. What does that tell you about her leadership and retention? Nobody can tolerate working for this woman for very long. And apparently the fact that the former deputy uh, mayor of public safety, John O'Malley, refused to do a lot of her stupid bidding and carry her water was why he decided to walk away and allow an opening for this woman to now take the place. And man, is she carrying the water? She's carrying it with both hands. She's carrying in a camel back on her, on her head in a bucket. Uh, what she testified to yesterday was about as outrageous and stupid as any public official ever uttered. She literally testified that the mayor and the superintendent wish they had the authority and ability to extend days off beyond one day a week, uh, but they don't because now the arbitration process has been invoked and they have to wait for an arbitration ruling. It is absolutely 100% false and she is either that dumb 
or that willing to lie straight to the face where no one unfortunately challenges her about that being wrong. And there's attorneys that are sitting in that city council, um, including the guy who is supposedly a former law enforcement officer, and I stress supposed, who was the chairman of public safety, who was a joke, who actually just ran for judge, and now I guess we know why he got defeated uh, soundly, because he doesn't understand law. Uh, when you're in arbitration, you can still continue to negotiate, which is what we've done. We actually had a mediation session with the city again yesterday. Even though the demand for arbitration has been made, you can still try and hammer out agreements, including work schedules. There's nothing precluding the city from sitting down and continuing the dialogue to work that out. The fact is they don't want to. They don't want to give up one ounce of control over management rights, which has allowed them to abuse the system and basically abuse our members like rented mules. The mayor hates that terminology. She can say what she wants, but there's the most accurate description on what they are doing to our members for the last two years plus. Some of the simple proposals we have tried and put forth, a cap on the amount of hours, regular and forced overtime in a 28-day police period. Full stop. That's not asking too much. CDL drivers have it. Other professions have it. You cannot work when you are exhausted. And then they're going to complain that officers' actions result in lawsuits that cost the taxpayers and the city money. Well, quit working officers into exhaustion where they might be apt to make bad decisions. But it's your fault. You refuse to acknowledge it. Let's talk about some other provisions put forth. Maintaining at least half of your days off in a police calendar. We understand that we are short 2,000 officers and we are sorely mismanaged with a ghost payroller and a lackey and now apparently a second lackey, uh, Tina Scahill, who came out of the, uh, retirement to steal another uh, ghost payroller job where she was basically hiding in the shadows for quite a while. But now that Bob Boyk spoke up and got fired, they stuck her in a constitutional policing thing where now she's definitely verbally and publicly carrying the mayor's water, which the suspect was she was basically calling the shots from the get-go and telling Eric Carter what to do from behind the green curtain. But neither here nor there. In this hearing, this deputy mayor was talking about this time off um, and talking about how don't even imply, I believe it was to Alderman Lopez, that canceling time off has anything to do with officer wellness, mental health, or even suicides. It's offensive to even make that suggestion. Well, no, it's not. Because until you know what kind of cumulative effect the work schedule has on your personal life, on your family life, and other things where you just feel so run down, unsupported, in despair, then don't say that it doesn't have an effect. It probably isn't the only factor or the sole factor or the predominant factor, but to say it doesn't play any role, shape, or form is absolutely disingenuous or, yet again, stupid. Um, but I guess everybody has their lackeys. All I can tell you is we're going to keep fighting. Thankfully, the fighting seems to pay off somewhat, and the public's you know, um, awareness of what's been going on with the scheduling, the media finally picking up the story, uh, Labor Day, RDOs will not be canceled. The tier deployment rotation will continue. That will supplement whatever manpower they need apparently, but you will be retaining your Labor Day days off. Thankfully, finally. Now there was some confusion about the tier deployment. I will tell you the tier deployment was supposed to go from a three-week schedule to a six-week schedule uh, next week. But because they decided to not cancel RDOs, they are not moving the tier deployment to six-week rotations. They're going to keep it to a three-week rotation through the end of September, and then in October, it will switch to the six-week rotation. Again, I know it was supposed to switch, but in exchange for not canceling RDOs, they continued with the three-week tier deployment rotation for right now. Stay tuned. Have a good weekend. I want to tell everybody who showed up to the golf outing Wednesday, thank you very much. It was a great turnout. It was a great success. The weather was great. Uh, Carlos got to drive a golf cart, uh, first time he's been behind a steering wheel in a year. So his road to recovery continues. Fernanda got to come out, Ballesteros got to come out and actually enjoy golf, uh, first time ever. I think she's a sleeper. She's uh, pretending to not be good, but from what I understand, she did all right for her first time. It was fun to see her out and having some fun with her brothers and sisters and everybody else. Uh, stay tuned. The updates will keep up as soon as uh, important information is needed. Have a good weekend.